You guys know it's one of my favorite times of year. It is the time of the Sephora Springs Savings event. event. I have done ever since I've been on YouTube. Every time Sephora had this event. So here we are. This is my recommendations for the Sephora Spring Savings event this year. Really excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Sephora. So thank you Sephora for supporting my channel. Let's get into the dates and all of the details on the event. So the most important thing to be able to to participate in this event is you need to be a part of Sephora's Beauty Insider program. It is completely free to join. It's very convenient, especially if you shop at Sephora often because you have an account with all of your purchases on there. Everything gets saved. It's very easy to organize. You get a birthday gift, all of that good stuff. I will have the link down below to sign up if you want to be a part of the Beauty Insider program. The longer you're a part of the program, there are different tiers that you can be a part of. The event is going to start April 1st and the Rouge is going to be able to have that early access starting April 1st and you'd be surprised lots of the good stuff sells out right away at midnight at that very first day so make sure you have your wish list prepared so from April 1st to April 11th Rouge tier you are able to get 20% off your purchase starting April 5th to the 11th VIB is able to get 15% off and then April 7th to the 11th VIB you guys are able to get 10% off and throughout the entire event Sephora collection will be 30% off to all of the beauty insiders no matter what tier. I hope you guys are as excited as me. It's been the last couple of days curating this list for you of all of the newer products that I recommend. However, I always recommend that you check out my previous recommendations videos from the last event this past winter and then the year prior. Lots of good stuff in there as well. I can only fit so much, you know? Let's get started with complexion. The first product that I have to recommend to you guys is a brand new product. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Glow Serum. I have been loving this for giving an all over glow to the skin. I don't find it to be oily. I do have a dry skin type, so do keep that in mind. But the glow on this is really pretty. It's not chunky or glittery, but it also is not super subtle. You're able to really see that glow. And I also like it because it does have a hydration factor to it as well. So this has been my go-to glowy base. I love it under my makeup, and I also love it when I'm not wearing any makeup at all. I think it gives the skin such a pretty glow. I've been really loving this. Highly recommend this one. As you know, there have been a lot of foundation releases, so I have a few to mention today. The first one that's a newer one is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I really love this one. I find it to be lightweight. It gives a nice medium coverage. It looks very natural on the skin and it gives a pretty glow. You can still see a little bit of your natural skin underneath if you're into that lighter to medium coverage. I have mine in the shade Patagonia. It's the perfect shade for me. I love the way that this wears. It feels super comfortable on the skin. It's one of my favorite everyday foundations that I've been reaching for a lot and it's definitely one of my favorites of the newer foundations that have launched in the last few months. Highly recommend it. The next one that I have I feel like did not get the credit that it deserved when it launched. This is the Dior Forever Foundation. This was recently reformulated and it is just as good as the previous one. It does give a more medium to full coverage so it definitely gives more than that NARS and it wears amazing eyes share this story, but I wore this on New Year's. I was sitting over a hot pot, which is basically a pot of steam coming at my face, and my makeup looked untouched by the time that I got home. So for me, this is like a really great evening foundation, a great foundation for when I know I need something long wear. I've been enjoying this a lot. And then to balance things out, I wanted to recommend a lighter coverage, kind of tinted product, perfect for summer. I feel like now that I live in Florida, I was gonna say summer's coming up, but I know it is so cold where a lot of you guys live. For me, I feel like it's really heating up, so I'm looking into the lighter coverage, more summery foundations. So I have to recommend this Fenty Each Drop Blurring Skin Tint. This wears so beautifully. It's extremely lightweight, but it still gives a decent amount of coverage considering it is a skin tint. I love the finish on it. It doesn't look too heavy on the skin. It's one of my favorite lighter weight foundations that I've been reaching for a lot more recently, given the temperature change that I'm in. So so this is one of my favorite skin tints, honestly, so I definitely recommend this. This is my favorite complexion product all time from Fenty. They killed it with this, and the concealer also that came out with this is very good as well, if you're looking into that. Concealer, I have been using the ABH Magic Touch Concealer nonstop. This was actually in the previous recommendations video as well, but I really feel like a better concealer has 
has not launched since this. There's something about this that is so skin-like. It blends out super quickly as well, so it's really easy to kind of tap on and go. You can get a lighter coverage with it if you apply just a little bit, but you can also get a more full coverage if you apply a little bit more. You can even get away with using this as foundation or using it without foundation and just kind of blending it out because it does have that skin-like finish. It doesn't look like you're wearing concealer and nothing else. So I highly recommend this. This is one of my favorite concealers. Again, ABH just did a phenomenal job with this formula. It doesn't crease. I, I can't say enough good things about it, okay? Next, setting powder. You guys know that I've been enjoying this one as well. I've talked about this a lot. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powder. I have mine in the shade Vanilla, so it does kind of lighten up and sculpt. It's not a super lightweight powder. It is a little bit more heavy duty, but with it being heavy duty, it does not look heavy at all. You just know it's doing a great job of setting the makeup. I prefer to use this with a brush because it can be a little heavy, but in a good way. But like today, I know I really wanted to lock my makeup in because I'm going to be wearing it for a few hours after this. I used a sponge to kind of press it in so that it would hold the product better. So it just depends if you're going for more full coverage, long wearing, or something lightweight. But this is very, very versatile, and it's a powder I've been enjoying a lot. It looks really smooth on the skin. It blurs everything. It softens the way that your complexion is. Really great. Obviously, I recommend it. It's in this video. I have a lot of cream and liquid products to recommend because it's been super trendy, and brands have finally found their way because there was a time where cream and liquid products just weren't cutting it for me, but these new ones are awesome. First, starting off strong with the Rare Beauty Bronzer Sticks. This is arguably one of the most easy bronzer sticks to blend out. So if you've been intimidated by using liquid or cream contour shades and bronzer shades because you just feel like you don't blend them out that well, this is so malleable. It will make your experience a lot easier. I prefer the shade Happy Soul. This is a little bit better for my complexion. It is warm. It's not going to be contoury, so do keep that in mind. Um, it is the most neutral of them all, but keep in mind these are bronzer shades. They're not necessarily going to be very cool. The other shade I have is Always Sunny, which is definitely a lot warmer. It's also a little deeper, so I'll put it into the uh, very outer edges of my face if I want a little extra contrast to my face. So if you're looking for something super easy to blend, recommend that. I couldn't help myself. I had to add in another cream contour stick. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. I love the shade Light Medium. Obviously, it depends on your skin tone. Mario really, he's such a genius. The shades that he came out with are so beautiful. This to me is the perfect bronzer slash sculpting shade. I feel like I look snatched every time I use this. Now, this is one of those products where you do have to spend a little extra time to work them out. But once it's worked out, it is beautiful. It is set. It is not going to go anywhere. So I love the color on this so much. And the formula is really nice and it stays really true as you blend it out as well. It doesn't get splotchy. It almost adds a little coverage if I'm being honest. Another phenomenal product that you should look into, especially for the summer. Let's get into the blushes. I am so late to jump on the bandwagon. I actually did buy these when they first launched. Rare Beauty came out with a few new colors of their liquid blushes, and then I re-fell in love with the product. I grabbed into the older colors that I had as well, so I've been enjoying this. Very heavy duty though. You only need the littlest bit, but it's going to last you forever, and I think they look super healthy on the cheek so once you get the amount that you need down it might be a little bit of a learning curve you're gonna love the way that these look they make the skin look really youthful and healthy there's a matte and a glowy finish right now I am currently wearing encourage it has a really beautiful mauve undertone and it looked crazy when I first applied it but as I blended it out you could see how easily it worked out and how it left such a pretty stain on the cheek so I've been enjoying this and I really believe rare beauty has the best colors in this line. They have a very wide range, and like I said, you can really get true opacity with them, but you can also get them really sheer. Love the shades that they added. These are gonna be one of my go-to liquid blushes for the summer. Would you guys, if you don't know my spiel, I actually prefer powder products in the summer, for sure, but I don't know, lately I've been wanting quicker makeup, and I find it's been quicker for me to blend out liquid products, so that's just what I've been doing. The other 
cream blush product that I want to recommend to you is the Danessa Myricks Dewy Lip and Cheek Palette. I actually use this formula for lips in my bridal kit, but I do also enjoy this on the cheeks as well. I don't recommend it for long wear, which is why I don't use it on the cheeks of my brides, but it gives such a glossy, dewy, moisturized look to the face. You guys know I do struggle with drier skin, so whenever I use this product, I find that my skin just looks so plump and young and beautiful with this. So yeah, I've been loving these colors. I think they are stunning. You do have to spend a little extra time to work them out, but they make my skin look so dewy and hydrated. Like I have a good skincare routine, so that's why I love these. So much so that I may have the other color to this in my <laughs> cart <laughs> to buy during the event. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. Love this, can't wait to try the other color of this. This color is Do It Flirty. Really great if you love pinky cheeks. And then I've been buying these for the last two previous events because I love being able to get them for 20% off. The Laura Mercier blushes. I feel like they are such an underrated powder blush formula and they again have some of the prettiest colors. The most recent one that I picked up was Fresco and I use it a little bit today to set my liquid blush. All of their colors are so beautiful. This is just a tried and true formula. It does everything you want a powder blush to do. It blends out easily. It leaves the perfect amount of product on the cheek and it just looks so pretty. Like I said, the best colors. If you like a neutral blush, I definitely recommend Fresco. Bellini is also one of my favorite colors. I'm definitely looking to go into store and pick up another couple of colors of these because I want to own the entire range. I think they are so beautiful. Definitely one of my favorite powder blush formulas and they're an older product but I had to mention them. So that's all I have for my complexion recommendations. Let's move into the eyes starting off with an eye primer. So this spring I am definitely going to be rocking pastel shades. I've already decided between the Natasha Denona pastel being launched and all of the other ones. I'm into it. I'm sold, as you can see on my eyes. So the products that you need if you are also going to play in the pastel family is the ABH Eye Primer. You'll see in the demo right here, it is so bright on the eyes. It's going to help make those pastels so much more vivid on the eyelids. I also find that it does help with longevity as well. It's one of my favorite eye primers when I am wearing something colorful. It keeps the brightness on the eye as well. It doesn't look patchy or anything. Anything. So this is a must-have base if you are going to be wearing the types of colors that I am going to be wearing this spring. I mentioned earlier how I've been into doing my makeup really quickly to get out the door and I was not expecting to love these as much as I did but I've ended up using these a ton for that quick on the go makeup. These are the Kosas 10 Second Eyes. These actually were reformulated and I didn't try the previous formulation, but this is a kick butt formulation. I love just grabbing one of these, putting a dot on the eye and blending it out. And then I have a really pretty shimmer all over the lid and they last all day. They do not crease. Be careful of the concealer you have underneath. If you use a concealer that creases, this will crease. But if you keep the eyelid pretty dry or you use a good eye primer, these are not going to budge and they are so pretty. If you want some recommendations. I, I love the shade Smolder and then I also love the shade Simmer. Both of these are my go-to but they also have a couple others. They go well over powder shadow as well but for me I use these as one and done quick shadows and normally I'm not into that. I like to sit down. I like to take time and put love into my eyeshadow looks but there are times where I just want to quick pop a shimmer on the lid and some mascara and go and these have been great. So They're also I think really fast fabulous for work, especially if you're running late. You can throw one in your purse. It's not going to a break and you can pull it out and just quickly rub it all over your eyes. So fabulous product. I've mentioned this a number of times that this has become one of my favorite mascaras, the Rare Beauty Mascara. I liked it at first, but now that it's had a couple weeks to dry out, I love this mascara. It's been one of my new favorites. Now, if you don't know, I do have pretty sparse, thin, straight eyelashes. I have falsies on the top right now, but I think it just makes my lower lashes look great, which is what I look for in a mascara, is how well does it complement my lower lashes. This builds beautifully, it adds curl, volume, anything I could want in a mascara. It doesn't flake. So if you're looking for a new mascara to try, I've been loving this. I will get into eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to save that for 
the end, but let's first finish up lips. So first I have a singular lipstick that I've been loving. I love nude lips, okay? I love a pale, pale, peachy nude. And I picked this up during the last event and I wanted to put it in this recommendations video. Charlotte Tilbury has one of my all-time favorite lipstick formulas. Halt! Actually, no, it. They have my favorite lipstick formula. So this is the shade Cover Star and it is the perfect beige nude. So you are going to need a lip liner. I would recommend Iconic Nude if you are looking in the Charlotte Tilbury family. That's a great lip liner to pair this with. But yeah, I love this shade. It's so versatile. It goes with so many looks because it's a pretty nude undertone so if you're looking for a perfect nude recommend looking into this one especially if you like to pair it with like a brownish kind of contoury lip liner color last thing for lips I can't recommend one shade in particular but if you pick up anything for lips I recommend something in the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose lip collection if you like the rosy lips. I've loved everything about this collection. Now, if you could skip out on any formulation, I would say the glosses you don't need. It's not a spectacular gloss formulation, but if you want to complete a look, I still do recommend the glosses. So essentially, she came out with three lip liners, lipsticks, and lip glosses, and there are three different shades within each product. So there's going to be Kala, which is going to have a pre-made lip look for you with a lip liner, lipstick, and lip gloss, Daphne as well, and then Peony. My recommendation for my favorite, I like Daphne. It's a little bit of a deeper rose lip. I think it's really pretty. Something more warm is going to be Kala, and if you want a really light pink, especially if you're very fair, I do recommend Peony. Right now, I'm wearing Daphne lip liner and Peony lipstick and lip gloss because I wanted the Daphne lip liner to be a little darker than than the lipstick. So the Natasha Denona lip liners, beautiful, super long wearing, very creamy, easy to apply. Lipsticks are my second favorite formula right behind Charlotte Tilbury. These are super soft and creamy and the colors are phenomenal. Like I said, the glosses to me, they don't stick out but they're still phenomenal. And again, if you want the Daphne lip look, just finish it off with the gloss as well while you're at it. How pretty. I do have a perfume at the end but let's finish off Makeup Strong with eyeshadow palettes. You guys know I'm an eyeshadow palette addict, so I put a lot of thought into these. So the first one, obviously, that I have to recommend, which is on my eyes right now, is the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette if you are looking into getting a good quality pastel palette. Now, I've been playing with this a lot more since my original review. I have a lot more thoughts on it. If you don't think you're going to wear pastels, you absolutely do not need this palette. And I almost wouldn't recommend paying full price for this, but if you can get this on a discount, aka a, the Sephora Spring Savings event. I do recommend this. So like I said, I'm wearing this right now. I haven't done a look quite like this yet and I love it. I think it's one of my favorite kind of wearable looks that I've done with this palette. The quality on this is great. This is such a user-friendly pastel formulation. Nothing is too chalky. Nothing blends away really easily. There's a couple shades that you do need to build up though. It is a little bit more of a sheer formula, but I've been loving playing with this. It really has inspired me to play and use more pastels this spring, so this set it off, and my nails match it as one of the must-have palettes for this event. The Natasha Denona Glam Face Palettes, I am obsessed with them, as you know, and I definitely recommend if you can get them at a discount to take advantage of that. I personally recommend the dark over the light. For some reason, I found my blush has not dried out like it did in the light, and these shades are a little bit deeper, but even though this is the dark palette, it still works well on my skin tone. I think it's a very beautifully curated palette. You can get a look on your face that is super cohesive without having to think about it. The quality is phenomenal. I mean, Natasha has a really great glimmer formula in here, and I'll let you take a look at the light as well. I love the light as well. My only hesitation with this is that the blush did dry out for me, but let's forget about that. How beautiful is this? Other than the blush, it's a really phenomenal formula. It is so beautiful. I love the tones. It's a quick, easy, all-in-one palette. Great for travel. Love these. And then, I'm not going to call out any palettes too specific, but now's a good time to pick up palettes because palettes typically have a higher price point. Think about those more pricey palettes that maybe you've had your eye on that you've been waiting for this event to pick them up. Just for example, any Charlotte Tilbury palette, if you love the Dior Quince or you've been interested. My personal favorite is Soft Cashmere if you've been interested. Um, I know the Makeup by Mario palette is trending. I picked up the wrong one, but you know the matte one. 
that one a lot of people have been wanting. The Patrick Tom Major Dimensions palette is also fantastic. It's a pricier palette, but it's a great basic palette. And then this is my secret recommendation. I will link this down below, but an underrated palette that I love if you're into neutral is the Melt Cosmetics Brunette palette. It's fantastic. So that's all the palettes, but again, just think about what pricier palettes have you been waiting to get a discount on. So yeah. And then the final product that I have in today's recommendations video is a perfume. I got this for Christmas and I love it. This is the Kaoli Vanilla 28 perfume. I have the scent palette of a teenager. I like to smell like cupcakes, bakery, candy, all of that. This is such a good vanilla scent. It's not a teenage vanilla scent. I think you'll really like it, but if you like those gourmand kind of smells, you will love this perfume. It's become one of my all-time favorites. I have a rollerball version as well that I'm trying to finish up. It lasts a pretty decent amount of time as well. Mm. I love it so much, so I did want to recommend that scent. I definitely am going in person to my local Sephora, and I'm going to be smelling some perfumes to see what I can pick up. But anyways, you guys, there we have it. Those are all of the products that I recommend for you. If you want to support my channel, I will have all of my affiliated links down below for you to shop through. Everything that I mentioned today will be linked down below. And again, a huge thank you to Sephora for sponsoring today's video. I will have the link down below to sign up to be a beauty insider. It is free so that you can participate in this event. And I will see you guys in the next video. And I will, of course, have a haul and all of that. I will keep you updated on what I pick up. Before I go, what are your recommendations for the event? Or what are you planning on picking up? I want to know. Thank you in advance. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good one.